we're going to pick up with The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. We're on chapter 20, Little Big Horn. The rhino's dagger sharp curved horn slid up Ella's back, meticulously skipping over her over each disc in her spine as it slipped beneath her jacket. The enormous animal's simple touch revealed all its might, all its power, and all its potential. Just when Ella was certain she would be speared, the rhinosaurus hoisted her out of the mud with one clean jerk of its head. Ella dangled in the air at the end of its snout. Hey, she said, squirming and kicking the air. Richie, help! The rhino sloshed through the mud, bouncing and swinging her from its point horn like a puppet on a short, fat string. The top band of her earmuffs fell across her face. The animal's every footfall sent a fresh wave of panic over her. Put me down, she grunted. The rhino started to trot, and she felt the cold wind prick her cheeks. Seconds later, at the end of the yard, she, the animal swiftly lowered her to the ground. <laughs> Ella recovered quickly and spun around. Here, near the zoo lights, she caught her first glimpse of the animal. Its eyes were warm and brown, and in them, Ella saw only kindness. The rhino didn't want to harm her. It wanted to help her, just the way Blizzard had. It snorted, spun around, and quaked back into the darkness. Seconds later, she heard Richie shrieking. This can't be happening! Ella shuddered. The rhino charged out of the shadows, dangling Richie by his backpack. When it reached Ella, it dipped his head and slipped the boy off his pipe, spike. Richie scrambled to Ella's side, and together the scouts gazed up at the huge beast. It's... it's friendly, Richie gasped. Maybe they're all friendly, Ella said, at least to us. She reached up, the rhino lowered his head, and allowed Ella to pet the side of its face. Its skin was hard and rough. Thanks, Ella said. For the help, I mean. The rhino grunted and nudged them toward the main part of the zoo which is massive, with its massive head. It wants us to go, Richie said. It wants us to find Megan, Egan declared. Somehow it knows. This is too weird. I have a feeling we haven't seen anything yet. The rhino nudged them again. Let's go, Richie said. I don't want to be rude to this guy. Yeah, Ella said, especially when it could make a shish kebab out of us with one poke of its horn. The rhino nudged them a third time and the scouts paid heed. They headed off toward a narrow pedestrian bridge that crossed across a concrete trench on the perimeter of the rhino exhibit. Think we have time to stop, Noah? Richie asked. We're not going to stop him, Ella countered. We're going to join him. But where's he going? Heck if I know, Richie. Inside, whatever that means. They crossed the bridge and scrambled to the main path. Ella turned back to look at the sign over the entrance to the exhibit. She'd seen it too many times to count, but reading it now was like reading it for the first time. Welcome to Rhino Rama, home to the biggest rhinosaurus in North America, Little Bighorn. As the scouts raced ahead, Ella whispered, See you later, Little Bighorn. Though the words were intended to be fond farewell, Ella was right. She would see Little Bighorn again. She would not see a lot of him, and she would see a lot of him indeed. Chapter 21, Noah Has Company. Noah walked alongside the glass wall of the aquarium in the Penguin Palace. He could only think of one thing, going inside. Inside to the inside. He wasn't sure what that meant or how to do it, but he knew it started with getting into the aquarium. On the other side of the glass wall, the penguins followed him. Most looked ordinary, but some had messy thickets of orange feathers. Each one waddled along the edge of the icy island, flapping its flippers. They kept bumping into one another, and occasionally one slipped on the ice and splashed into the water. If I weren't here, Noah said to himself, how would I get inside this exhibit? How would I? Thup, 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 thup. He sucked back his breath. Someone was on the other side of the aquarium, near the back of the building. 
By the sound of it, that someone was coming toward him. The penguins crowded the edge of the ice and bobbed in the water. The person kept making the strange noise, thup, 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 thup. It sounded like a baseball card caught in the spokes of a bicycle wheel, thup, 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 thup. It didn't miss a beat, and it was just around the corner. Noah was about to turn and run when he saw not a person, but a penguin. The bird was black and white and had a yellow patch below his neck. He stood a couple of feet high and his flippers looked remarkably like long, slender pan like long slender pancakes. He waddled forward as fast as he could go, so his flat feet slapped the concrete. Thup, 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 thup. He was headed straight for Noah. Behind him, a second penguin turned a corner, then a third and a fourth and a fifth, more and more until a crowd of penguins was rushing toward him. They kept bumping into and falling over one another. Within seconds, Noah was surrounded by the strange birds. He felt cold rising from their bodies. It was amazing how different they looked outside the aquarium. Their bodies, glossy with ice water, were more colorful and full dimensional. For the first time, the penguins seemed real. I need to get inside your aquarium, Noah said. Can you guys show me how? A couple of penguins bumped into his legs, urging him to walk in the direction they had come from. Okay, Noah said, lead the way. The penguins did exactly that. Ella becomes speechless. Ella and Richie sat in a quiet spot outside Metro Apol Olus under a lamppost, trying to figure out where Noah might have gone. Arctic Town, Richie said. All that stuff that happened when, with Blizzard, I'm sure he picked Arctic Town. What about the Forest of Flight, Ella asked. Or maybe he went to see the monkey with the long tail. I don't know. Me neither. Ella stared up at the sky, a blank canvas for the portrait of her thoughts. For a moment, neither of them spoke. Then Richie said in a weak voice, Uh, Ella? Not now, Richie, I'm thinking. You're gonna wanna see this, he insisted. Ella looked at him, his face was white. His expression was blank, as if he felt no emotion. Or as if it's so, many emotions that they canceled one another out like the variables in Mrs. Bluss mind-bending algebra equations. Ella's eyes followed his gaze, and she gasped when, with fright. Finally, Richie spoke very quietly. What are they? Ella had no words. Not for this. Chapter 23, Marching with Penguins. The penguins led Noah to a door in the wall opposite the aquarium. The sign read, Employees Only. Three penguins jumped at the door and thrust it open. Inside was a narrow hallway with a steep wooden floor. The penguins led Noah up the ramp. A few feet ahead, the passageway swung around a sharp turn. One penguin lost its balance and rolled down the ramp, knocking over penguins like bowling pins. Looking dazed but no less determined, the fallen penguins jumped to their feet and started their climb again. The hallway straightened out and headed, and headed toward the aquarium. Moments later, Noah felt cold air rising through the floor. The aquarium was directly beneath them. They reached an open doorway framed with ice. One by one, the penguins leaped through it and dropped out of sight. Noah leaned through the doorway to take a peek and slipped on the snow-covered ramp. He tumbled down and landed flat on the icy shore. The penguins following behind him trampled across his back in single file. Each time Noah tried to yell, Stop! A webbed foot landed on his head and pressed his face into the snow. Finally, when all the penguins had crossed over him, he worked his way to his feet and looked around. The inside of the aquarium was covered in a snow, frost, and ice. Penguins were everywhere, and the black eyes of each suited bird was pinned on him. Noah dust dusted the snow off his jacket. His breath rose from his mouth like steam. He didn't know what the birds expected for him, so he simply stated his purpose. I'm looking for a penguin named Podgy. Chapter 
24 avalanche of fur. Ella stared in disbelief. What are they? Richie asked. 50 yards away, hundreds of little animals were charging toward them. They covered along a stretch of the sidewalk and spilled onto the grass, standing just higher than someone's ankles. They were packed so tightly together that they looked like the rushing mass of an avalanche, an avalanche of fur. <clears throat> Richie, Ella said slowly. So it would have been like, Richie, Ella said slowly. The things look like rats. I was hoping you wouldn't say that, Richie said. Rats are friendly, right? I mean, that stuff in the movies about rats being mean, they just say that to freak you out, right? I don't know, Ella said. You're the one with the big brain. As the animals approached, they grew noisier. They, their pin-sized claws scratched the sidewalk and made a high-pitched shh, shh sound. The animals were barking but their barks were quiet and squeaky. Yip, yip, yip. Hold on, Ella said. Those aren't rats, they're gophers. They, the closer they came, the easier they were to see. They had short legs, squat, chubby bodies, and heads that looked like furry tennis balls. When they reached the scouts, they surrounded them and sat up on their hind legs, exposing their fat, fuzzy underbellies. They watched Ella and Richie as if they were expecting the children to do something. Now that they were so close, their yipping sounds were louder than ever. These are prairie dogs, Richie said, not gophers. Ella leaned toward Richie and said, whatever they are, I'm guessing they know who we are. Richie turned around in circles, eyeing the prairie dogs suspiciously. I'm guessing you're right. You know what else I'm guessing? What? I'm guessing they know Megan, and not only that, but they know where she is, and that's where Noah's headed. If we can't trust Tank, said Richie, how do you know we can trust these guys? I don't. All I know is we gotta help for Noah. Richie nodded. Ella looked down at the animals and said, okay, furballs, show us what you want to show us. The mass of prairie dogs turned and healed back in the direction they came from. Escorting the, escorting the scouts through the dark, cold night. Chapter 25, Noah on Ice. A huge penguin rounded the block of ice. He was as tall as Noah, and he looked like he weighed close to 60 pounds. As he waddled forward, the blubber on his belly rolled from side to side. He stopped in front of the scout, tipped back its head, and casually aimed his bill upward the way penguins do. Podgy, Noah said. You are podgy, right? The penguin didn't reply. Tank told me to meet you. Noah paused for a second. Can you understand what I'm saying? Still, no response. Tank said, without warning, the penguin dropped his bill and lunged into Noah. Penguin and boy crashed downward, hit the ice and rolled into the water. Noah sank. On one side was the icy island, on the other was the long glass wall of the aquarium. He heard muffled splashes one at one after another. Penguins were diving in around him. They started to swim up and down the channel, churning the water. Noah panicked and gulped freezing water. His rear end struck something, the bottom of the tank. Looking up, he could see only the white undersides of swimming penguins. He pushed up from the floor of the tank, but a penguin struck him down. Dazed, he sank a second time. Around him, the icy water churned. He felt faint. He was exhausted. He never should have trusted Tank. Tank has said the fate of the world depended on keeping the secrets of the zoo safe. Noah's life was an easy trade. Another penguin crashed into him. Noah gulped more water. He knew he was seconds from drowning. Matching with penguins. Marching, not matching, marching with